Okie dokie, let's go. <laughs> let's wait for this thing to start. Connecting live. We're live, yay. Cool. All right, we're on. Oh. 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 Apparently Google thought I was talking to it. Uh, we'll just ignore that. <laughs> nice. Oh, boy. <laughs> Didn't I... even say the magical word to trigger it. You know. I don't know what happened there. I, I had a similar thing happen uh, at, at home recently, ah! too, where, like, my mom was saying something and, like, she and suddenly like Google just came on and thought she requested like some song to be played and this is like what <laughs> we never we never asked Google <laughs> but all right there we go I think we've started this is a uh, okay cool this, this is how things are going hello everyone if anyone's out there watching this in the future right yes we're back and could I do a uh, a request of a slight recap uh, just for myself and for future people that may go through uh... this video series. Yeah. Uh, so uh, first so of we're, all, we're building we're building the uh, the rock paper scissors game. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be multiplayer. Oh no! And we're gonna do it FP style. And we were uh, working on the logging layer last time. Yeah, we 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 were working on like different layers. Um, one thing that someone actually asked me to do on YouTube was change the font size, make this bigger. Let's make it. Let's make this. Mm -hmm. Let's make this a big boy. Good idea. Let's do uh, twenty-eight. Whoa! Sweet. <clears throat> nice that and makes, big. That like totally makes it easy to see on my phone too. So. <clears throat> okay. There we go. That's good for me too. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, that's going to be covering up like the entirety of our screen now. So. <laughs> right. All right. Hopefully that isn't a problem. Uh, where the heck am I? Okay, I'm at the bottom of the file. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we just did the Hello World log test run, and it worked, as I recall. Yeah, 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 and we talked a little bit about STM last time, or software transactional memory. Uh, we talked, we did a recap of like how um, monads work. We did a little uh, recap of how uh, we define interfaces in, uh, in in Haskell using these DSLs. Uh, is there anything else um, that we need to go over? Do you think, or uh, so? What are we going to dive into? Today like we were gonna. What's on the menu for today? On the menu for today is something that you brought up last time, and that is, how does one do unit testing in Haskell? And I thought that was a really good question Ooh. because I cool. actually okay. don't know yeah. the answer to that. So today we're gonna that be looking good. up how the heck do you do unit testing? So. So we're gonna we're gonna unit test our glorious hello world logger. We're gonna unit test our glorious hello world logger. We're gonna unit test our glorious. Uh, do I even have it here? I'm trying to remember what else we did. I don't I think it. at one oh. point it, something wasn't. Oh, okay. Sorry. To do refill. Oh yes, our to do. I remember. I remember yeah. our sweet, <laughs> sweet to do that we put in there. Right. All right. Um. One thing I want to do is uh. Create a function determine winner. Is this something we can test? Uh, something very basic and simple. Something oh yeah, definitely. Don't that's need that's test, prime but... unit testing, prime okay. unit testing stuff there. We're gonna do this, and we want to get. Okay. A... So we're taking two player inputs as input to this function and returning a game result. Exactly. I'm just narrating this to, yeah, make things clear for myself, but also so you can hear what I'm saying, what I'm thinking, and correct me if I have anything horribly. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely correct. That's exactly how you would read that. All right, we're so, off to a good start. Let's start by doing a bit of pattern matching. So, I want to know if the first player's input is rock, and if the second player's input is rock, what should the result be? Uh, in this case, it should be a draw. Yeah. A draw, yes. All right. What if the second player's input is paper? Then we want to say player two wins. And if it's scissors, oops, then it should be player one. Whoa. Do do do. We'll just copy and paste this a couple more times. Now we have to do the paper cases, so I'll just do a little copy around like this. So we got paper rock, we have paper paper, uh, paper paper, and paper scissors. And then we'll do the same with the scissors down here. Oops. 
There you go. All right, so who wins if it's paper and then rock? It'll be player one. Player one. Paper defeats rock. This is a draw. And this one, I think, is player two wins. Scissors be two win. Yep. Yep. Uh, this would be player two wins because rock beats scissors. Scissors beats paper, so player one wins, and scissors cannot beat scissors, so this should be a draw. And there we yeah. go. There's a very basic function that we can unit test later. So now As we're going to... Oh, just go before we, we continue, I just had one sort of question comment here. Whenever I... I mean, I know we're just uh, putting this together so we can unit test it, and this is not like uh, sort of the final product, but I... I always think it's interesting to discuss like possible improvements to something like this. So we basically just brute force enumerated all possibilities here, like at a high level, do you have any thoughts about how you might be able to make this a little bit cleaner to uh, prevent copy pasting to make things a little bit more, I guess, quote unquote, elegant uh, in the implementation of this function? How to Not to derail elegant. things too much, but I just, uh, I always like to hear people's thoughts on like how to make things pretty and, and, a little bit more sort of efficient and yeah. mm, that's a good question like what uh, could you do I don't know we could like we we could do like a nested pattern match I guess like we could just do like a, a check for well I mean it wouldn't really make a difference we'd sell the same number of cases mm. yeah I guess like what I'm thinking about is if you could extrapolate this to some game that had like a whole bunch of states is there a way to do it in a smarter way if there were like six moves instead of three moves or like 18 moves or something like that just kind of an interesting problem to mull um i don't have any great suggestions off the top of my head either i'm just thinking about it a little bit um yeah i don't know i don't i don't really know uh i don't really know what the best way to do that would be honestly i would for i guess like yeah doing every single possible combination probably isn't very good i guess one thing i might do is add like a type class so I could define like a class I don't know uh, input comparable or something and implement that for player input I guess and have like uh, I, I guess we could have like a compare method on this thing that's, what, that's the only idea I have right now hmm well, one thing I would like thinking about this is if it was a Java pro program or something like that, like, you know, you would have like, if player one input is rock, then do these other things rather than having like rock, 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 paper, 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 you could just have that player one input once. And then you could have the player two input. Like, is there a way to do that in, in, oh, yeah, in we, a functional programming yeah, we, context? We, we can you totally know? do that. Uh, so this is, I mean, this is just one way of defining that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it because I... I, I, I'm okay with that. Uh, another way we could have done this is we could have made this. Uh, yeah, we, we actually uh, we could leave this even. We do input two, and what we could do is case input two of you know rock. Do something there. Oh, okay, cool. Paper. Right. Okay, so we've locked down input one, and we're just having a case on input two. Okay, cool. Yeah, we yeah. can do that. Um, that's cool. Yeah, it's interesting to see how to do that uh, in in Haskell. Um, but anyway, not to not to uh, derail things too much. We can continue. I just thought it's an interesting thing to discuss. Yeah, no, it is an interesting question. Um, all right, let's go then. So we're gonna try and do some unit testing with Cabal. Haskell. The fun name. And of course, there's no good tutorials. H unit. Right oh, the H unit. Top. That makes me automatically like it because it sounds like J unit. <laughs> Inspired by J unit. Right, there you go. Seem less, yes, less intimidating. There you go. H unit is a unit testing framework for Haskell inspired by the J unit tool for Java. Okay. How to use H-Unit, okay, cool. assuming you're familiar with Haskell, not, though not necessarily with J-Unit. You can obtain H-Unit doing this guide here. An cool. adaption of J-Unit to half. That's Test center methodology for software development is most effective when tests are easy to create. Change and execute the J-Unit tool pioneered support for, yeah, yeah, we know. 
We know about JUnit. You can create tests, name them, group them. Good old JUnit. Them. I remember when I first heard about JUnit, it was like the first unit testing framework I ever had encountered, and I thought it was so amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, JUnit's my first as well. I don't know, I just thought, you know, I remember... it's, it's good. <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah, really I have strong taking, opinions uh... on unit testing frameworks, though. Yeah, I like. I guess I like JUnit just because I know it the most and it's the one I've used used the most. But I remember in university I took a course on compilers, which was actually quite a challenging course. Yeah. And the instructor was like, "You should have unit tests." And I was like, "I don't really know what a unit test is, so I'm just going to ignore you." <laughs> and so I did the entire course without any unit tests. And by oh, the end, no. like I was just making one change and breaking everything else. It was it was a you know I learned a lot in that course, and I learned definitely that unit tests are important so yeah yeah unit testing is important yeah, definitely um yeah definitely uh don't really um don't don't, don't really think that the you know, jn is all that different from other unit testing frameworks they're, they're all generally saying like you can do this kind of like assert equals kind of thing so yeah yeah uh anyway in the haskell module where your test was i import test.h unit Name the test cases and group them together. I don't know, this doesn't really tell me how to set up unit testing uh, in Cabal, though. So what is Cabal versus Cabal each unit? Is... Are they both frameworks, or...? Cabal is the, uh... It's the thing oh. that I'm using to build and run. Like, if I use Cabal Ooh, to okay, okay, okay. run... Gotcha. Like, that, so it's that'll... like the compiler-type deal thing? Uh, kinda, I guess. Let's see if this uh, runs again. Because I have uh, changed things, but you know this this will yeah this will compile things this will run things it also passes in this O1 flag so it does the uh, compiler optimization stuff as well ah yeah wah, doesn't, wah. doesn't like the network uh, DSL all the declarations oh my god yeah that's something we're gonna have to oh did I define that multiple times network F oh yeah I did this is this should be network L sorry. Bad, bad programmer. Uh, actually, yeah, we'll, we'll just let it build and run. See if it compiles. I, I want to fix all the other issues first because, oh, really? Oh no! Oh, it's network F again. Dun dun. Free dun. network F. Should it be a free network F? That seems must be the problem when we're making network L, right? Yeah, we're trying to make network L a free monad using network F. Oh, the, because it's because of this. Because there's this generic oh, oh, yes. here, yeah, we can't do that. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, at least I'm pretty sure that's the reason why that doesn't work. So we're gonna actually take, I guess, a user message for now, or like a, I don't know, request and response seem like pretty, uh, pretty bad names. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll just say this is uh, we'll calls the client uh, message. I'll call this one the server message. I don't know why I pasted that. Obviously, I just deleted it anyway, but whatever. Uh, if we're sending a message, we want to send a server message. If we want to receive a message, that should be a client message. So yeah, let's see if that fixes this. Now we're having problems with receive message doing lift f uh probably because lift f is taking a generic message yeah so we can fix that and receive message should be a client message fix that there we go and that hopefully will build yeah the Haskell compiler can take a little bit it, it's doing a lot of work man. it's doing a lot of work behind the scenes like Haskell uh, because you know everything is purely functional it has to do like a, a, a ton of um, optimizations and stuff behind the scene to you know I'll, I'll make it at least like competitive with other languages but yeah it, it does a lot of work it has to do a lot of type checking and stuff too because obviously Haskell's type system is a little bit more sophisticated than say Go's or Java's so. Hmm. All right, that there took we a go. long time to, com to compile though. I'm thinking about like, what if you had a project that is a commercial project, so it's very large, 
and you just want to run your unit tests or something like that. And um, to do that, you have to compile stuff, and it's going to take like seven, seven minutes for you to run like a unit test or something like that. That doesn't sound nice. Um, I think that is actually the reality. Uh, I I've seen some posts that complain about build times in Haskell, and how you know, there was actually a project that was using Haskell before, and they actually ended up switching to like npm or like Node, because they just couldn't. Just because uh, of the build times. Yeah, just purely because of the build times. So, yeah. well, yeah. I mean, it seems like a small issue, but like when you're doing that day in day out, you know, if you're like unit testing, you know, once a week. Yeah, and, it is. Uh, uh, that, it, that time adds up. It it is pretty bad. It is definitely pretty bad. Uh, there might be some options I could pass in or something to make this go faster. I'm, I'm not actually sure. I'm, like I'm not like a Haskell expert, but like th yeah. as like a first impression for like an out of the box installation, I, I will say that that's uh, <laughs> it's not very good. Cause... Yeah, like a hello world taking that long. It's like oof, yikes. Yeah. It might be because we've turned on all these fancy things like uh, drive function and JDTs, though. That, 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 that oh, could yeah, contribute I'm sure to that. That's doing a lot of stuff for us. Yeah, but I mean, still, like, if I'm running my unit test and I just change one little thing and then I yeah. have to wait anyway. Yeah, no, I I agree. It, it is it is kind of bad. Um, the 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 obviously the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the, I guess the reason the the reasoning behind this is mostly that. If you catch your errors at compile time, and do all your uh, optimizations at compile time, you you'll, you'll then the runtime experience is a lot better for the end user. So, I mean, doing I you're, you're you're kind of paying for these costs up front, rather than you know running well, into like yeah, null yeah, pointer enough. exceptions and everything later. So it's yeah. more like a this is better for the customer at the end of the day kind of thing. But you know you can also argue right. you can also argue that like type checking doesn't need to happen, like as as part of compilation, like. There are other languages that actually will have type checking be completely separate as just like a safety check, and you can actually just compile and run your code without actually type checking it at oh, all. Oh, and so you could like just turn that on sort of as a final check before you open your code review or something like that. Yeah, and they wanted you to just and they and they call this uh they, they call this a uh, curry typing I believe so versus like church typing so I I believe that Haskell's using church typing where it actually has to you know check all the types as part of compilation because the meaning of the program is tied to the types but i i believe kind is a curry type language and the meaning of the program is not actually tied at all to the type system so type checking can be done completely separately and that's pretty cool i think hmm. that's cool yeah. i think python also has a similar system where you can add types to python programs and you can do you know a separate type checking step just for safety but you know python is interpreted at its core and you don't actually have to add types for you to actually interpret and run a python program so uh just just you know fun facts snapple facts hmm. i'm actually a bit <laughs> I'm, I'm curious about that it's been a while since i've used python so uh pardon me if this is like a stupid question but so python is dynamically typed right you create a variable you don't give it a type you just yeah. stuff whatever you want in. yeah so what it's... do you mean exactly by creating types in python so, uh, from a type theory perspective, there isn't really a such thing as dynamic typing. Like dynamic typing is really just runtime tags. It's just that the the, the terminology that industry has picked up is dynamic typing. Like typically, when we think of types, types are things that exist purely at compile time. You know, they're they're, they're things that can be statically checked. Uh, so, right. Really, like dynamic types are just runtime tags. When I say types in this context, I mean you can actually add like static types to your Haskell code and you can have like a separate type checker that will actually check those types at like a, a sort of like compile time or I guess you like a, a type checking phase and that ha that runs before you ever actually execute or interpret any of your Python code so it checks that like if you have said this is going to be an int, you're actually giving it an int, like type checking, just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would think Python of it as in, in Java or something. Typing, typing support for type hints. Here we go. Python type checking guide. Mm -hmm. Interesting. New inversion. Does not enforce function and variable type annotations. They can be used by third-party tools. Interesting. So Python's like, we don't do this, but if you really want to do it, we'll have this thing you can hook into. Exactly. So this is like, 
What well, like the curry typing thing that? Whoa, I was talking name about. string. Get out of town. Tur oh. Yeah. They, Trippy. They, this is a uh, this is this is legit. A lot of people don't seem to actually know about this. It's kind of uh, it's kind of funny, but yeah, this is a thing. So like, why would you do like why would you do that? Why would you want static typing in Java? Why not just use a static type type language with that? You mean static typing in Python? Um, oh yes, yeah, right. Because maybe you're writing a you know application for like big data or whatever. You're doing you're maybe you're a data scientist, right? And you want and like all the libraries are written in Python, so. You kind of don't really have a choice. <laughs> you got you have to use Python, but you want static typing, so then you can just you know tackle like, static typing. Maybe this is like a philo philosophical question, but choosing a language that's dynamically typed versus statically typed. I mean, there's I guess personal preference involved. Maybe there'd be some sort of a performance impact about using one over the other. But like, what are the reasons that people typically give for using one over the other? Um. Well, it's kind of like what you say, right? Like dynamic type languages tend to be a bit slower because a lot of stuff has to happen at runtime. Um, right. You, like in a statically type language, like say Rust, for example, you can the compiler can do a crap ton of work. It can actually optimize your code a ton, and uh, that's that's why you can generally get a lot faster binaries. And obviously, you know, type checking. That makes sense, right. Sorry? Yeah, you're just being more explicit. It, it just, you're, yeah. you're being more explicit, and so the compiler can make yeah, more assumptions, I guess, and, and have, has more information to work with. Exactly. And, of course, you know, that extra information can also, you know, help you check things like, are you passing in the right variable type or to, to something, right? Like, if I'm passing it into a string... Right, they can check stuff for it you. It knows that's that right. that's wrong, yeah. and it can reject the program immediately. It gives you that instant feedback. So the, 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 the benefits there are kind of twofold, right? You get faster binaries, and you can get... Um, safer, uh, safer programs, because you can have yeah. stuff that's I mean, statically checked and proven to be correct, at least you know to some degree. Obviously, if someone takes a sledgehammer to yeah. your computer at runtime, there's not really much you can do about that. But you know, hmm. yeah, I, I've always like worked with statically typed languages, and so that's my preference. Like when I see something in Python, I, I just get kind of nervous. Yeah, I do but, too. Uh, because you can pass in like anything to anything else, and you know errors yeah, exactly. all, are all entirely runtime. The the the, the thing about uh, dynamic typing that a lot of people like is that it's a lot more flexible. It's a lot easier. And like for example, um, in Haskell, we're doing all this fancy stuff with like this free monad, and we're creating like these interfaces and all this stuff. Like even in Java, you have to create like interfaces and. It's a lot easier to do that kind of stuff in a dynamically typed language where you don't actually even really have to worry about, you know, creating these uh, interfaces and using HKTs or whatever the heck. Like, you don't have to worry about monads. Like, er everything is dynamically typed, so all these kind of structures kind of just disappear. It, it removes a lot of complexity in that sense, but it also adds the ability to shoot yourself in the foot because you don't really have any real contracts. Like, they're all kind of. Uh, enforced through like documentation there's no real way to like have the, uh, a compiler or anything enforce that unless you you know do the curry typing thing hmm. so there, there are anyway. some trade-offs there, there's definitely some yeah, yeah. It, it's a good well, discussion like, that always seems to be the answer there are trade-offs yeah there, there are no silver bullets in, in, exactly. in programming <laughs> in programming or pretty much anything else yeah I anyway, mean, they're pretty we, rare, those silver bullets. We, we got, like, mega derailed. <laughs> Let's, <Yeah>. uh... <laughs> actually, I might want to right. get that. We're getting age unit, hopefully, with Cabal... Cabal... Uh, oh, Cabal user guide. Developing Cabal packages. Uh, I'm more curious to know how to use Cabal. Unit, oh, one? God, look at this page. Oh, okay. Look at this oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful CSS. <laughs> yeah, no, this is not... The those are some sweet, unordered lists. Unit testing. Oh, look at that. Okay, here uh, we go, Synopsis, I think? a unit testing framework for Haskell, and it's called HUnit. Nice. I think this okay. is HUnit. Okay, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Tell, tell me more. Oh, is that it? Is that all they have on unit testing? No, that can't and be And the following oh. setup.hs. Oh. oh, wait, hold, hold, hold on, you... hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Uh, test suite. Here we go. 
Oh, there we go. Let's go, let's go. Test suite sections, if I let describe package test suites and must have an argument after the section label, which defines the name of the test suite. This is a freeform argument, but may not contain spaces. Okay. Should be unique among uh, the names of the packages, other test suites, the package looks excusable, blah, blah, blah. All right. Uh, what's the syntax? I just want to know what the syntax is. Test module identifier. Okay. Okay, so we can define a test suite like that. All right, let's go. Uh, I, I really wish I could see that. <laughs> At the same time I was doing this. Can you do um, the old, uh, like, drag the window to the side and it will snap to the side and then give you a choice of windows to put beside it? You know what I mean? Uh, I could, but then that I would old cover windows up the chat. Chestnut? I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to cover up the chat in case. Oh, okay. Just in case. I mean, I, it doesn't, like, play, play a sound or something when somebody types something? I don't know. No one's ever said anything in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, you could try it, but... Yeah, oh, I, I would I, if I was on my PC, but I'm on my phone, so... Well, yeah. that's be a mystery for another day. We'll just leave it. Oh, uh, God, what am I doing? Uh, right, I want to edit the that file. Uh, how do I uh, how do I switch files? I guess I can't really do that because I'm not using uh, I'm not using MeoVim. Oh, whatever. Yeah, there we go. Ah, I'm covering the chat anyway. Oh, we'll just cover it temporarily. It's fine. <laughs> you know what? Just it's for okay. A yeah, if I was using NeoVim and I had like my plugins installed for like a uh, Nerd Tree or whatever, then I'd I'd be using that. But this is on a uh, I'm, I'm just using plain old Vim on the, on the uh, WSL here. So unfortunately, I can't really do that. And yes, I know that's is this not like the build uh, file. Oh, this is generated actually. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, this no, yeah, 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 this is generated. So I actually. Uh, typed in like cabal in it to create this it's a it's a very simple little command and it just creates oh i see so it just generates a, like a config file with default stuff it creates a, yeah it creates a and config now... file it creates a source it creates the main.hs and adds like a little hello world and that's uh that's, that's that's all that's all it does really okay nothing special anyway uh we get to dependencies okay cool we get to create a test suite we're gonna call it um, Sweet. I don't know. RPS tests, and we can give it a type. Uh, I think we're just gonna copy this. I don't think it matters too much. Uh, let's see, how does this work? Test foo type. So like. And you got a note. Okay, cool. I'm on uh, I'm on Windows right now. So where where is the H unit dependency coming in here? Don't we need to add H unit as like a dependency somewhere? Like, we need to import it and then have it as a build dependency. Just unsuspicious. I, I have is that no built idea. in? Is HU unit built in, maybe? That'd be nice, but I kind of doubt it. I have no idea. We'll, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Oh, wait. Uh, test food. Okay. HS. No, I don't have a test food. HS. Uh... Test RPS. Or RPS test.hs. Or, I don't know. Would that be part of a namespace? Like a naming conflict? I have no we'll idea. Let's out. just call it that for now. <laughs> okay. Uh, build depends base, I guess. Uh, I, honestly, this name kind of bothers me because, like, my source is a like, capital for main. Mm, yes, it's not consistent. That's true. I'm just capital T. There you go. Nice. Just RPS. We'll just camel case it. And that's, I think, good enough. Do I have to put it in a specific build directory, though? Or? Base. Do you need to put a specific... There's, like, versioning on the the uh, other dependency on base you have. It's greater than 4.12 and less than 4.13. Or greater than or equal to, so it's 4.12. Uh, I'm going guess... to... I'm going to assume no, but we'll see. Okay. <laughs> I don't Where's know. We'll, 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 we'll try it, I guess. But where's my cursor? Why is it... Why is it doing this? Okay, there it is. Yeah, it was, it was just off screen, so it was looking weird. Oops. Okay, we'll scroll down. Ah, uh, let me just shrink this a little bit, I guess. Ah, I just ruined everything. You you ever like on uh, on Windows accidentally press like Function C because you think you're on a Mac? <laughs> All the time. The worst thing actually is that like the the tab the application switching hotkey on Mac. It's like windows button tab 
and Windows button tab on Windows does like something a little bit different. It's very it's very frustrating. Or like when you're trying to switch tabs in Firefox, it's literally the reverse of what it is in Mac, all uh, the time. Basically, it's all, I get that all the time. Yeah, that's that's the worst. Um, I'm trying to create a file. <laughs> my my brain just like stopped working. Test touch. Or I guess you can just vim it. Yeah, vim will just do it, right? Yeah, I don't need to touch. An empty file. Okay. Uh, so here's what theirs looks like. This test always fails. Okay. Import system. Okay. Well, if we can just get that working, then that'll be a step forward. Oh, my stomach. That's a failure. I appear to be a little bit hungry. Hungry. Oh well, we are approach. It's well, we're getting close to lunch. Well, maybe we can just push push on till noon, and then you can go get some lunch. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Import. See system. how much progress Exit. we can make on these. Uh, yeah. Is it failure? Okay, this looks promising. I hope it's kind that's... of weird that you would have an always fails. Well, I yeah. guess that's what you're supposed to do with tests, right? Like you're supposed to, they should they should fail, and then you start your implementation. And then once it's done, they pass. Or that's one way to do it anyway. Right, I rarely right. actually do it that way. Uh, Cabal, I actually don't know. Let me uh, help. Well, help. All right, what does it say? Okay, these are legacy commands, v2, these are the ones we want, cabal v2, Clean. test, runs cabal. test suites, there we go. Oh, nice, sweet. Cabal v2, test. Uh, it's it's kind of unfortunate that they have this like legacy thing, and it's kind of confusing, where if you accidentally run the cabal test, it doesn't actually work properly. Because obviously other build tools and other languages are not going to be like that, like Rust doesn't have that problem, because it's newer, but... Just kind of unfortunate that uh, you know Haskell's as old as legacy it is. Legacy code. And, yeah, yep. legacy craft has accumulated on the language, and yeah, it has a lot of problems. Oh, configuring test suite. Oh my god, this is yeah. exciting. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, so far so good. Uh, can't find source. Oh. oh. Okay, well, at least that doesn't seem too difficult. Uh, why can't it find the source? Where was it looking for it, though? Can't find it in... Uh, well, it looks like something. it's some generated like generated build directory. Yeah. Uh, Do you have let's... to build first? Maybe oh, you have to build right. it to like, generate the build files? Cabal v2 build. Let's do that. There we go. Get those build artifacts where we need them. You're right, I didn't build. Yeah, I always find it confusing too. Like sometimes a test target will actually build, and then run the tests. No, I think it clearly in this case. No, it no, won't. it it has the same output though. Like it says the following will be built up here. So I think it did try to build it. I just think it didn't work. Maybe, hold on. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll we'll run it again just in case. Uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I can't find the source. Let's. Oh god. Test RPS. Oh. Can't find source for test RPS. What do you have in that location? If you just like ls, do you have anything in there? Sorry. If you just like cop, if you just copy that path all the way to RPS dash test dash temp, and you ls, maybe that doesn't even exist. Maybe that's what the error is. But it'd be interesting to see. Maybe it's just like a file naming thing. Uh, or you something. know what? That's that's probably a good idea. Okay, let's go there. Does it exist? No such. Doesn't exist. Okay, wow. Well, there's that. That'd do it. It's super. So something's not being built. All right, let's. Because uh... this is in source slash main, right? Like I'm thinking. Right. Main is should also be in source slash test RPS. I could probably make a test directory. I probably will do that actually. Um, let's try that again. Yeah. So what change did you make? You just you just said you just made the path a little bit more explicit to the test file. Yeah, instead of saying it's yeah. just test.hs or whatever, it's source slash right, right. .hs. Okay, yeah, oh, I don't makes, know. Makes we'll, we'll see if this works. I I have no idea. Yeah, the following will be built. Mm -hmm. RPS server. So is oh a configuration test suite for RPS test. Okay. Compiling source. We're compiling test RPS main. RPS. And RPS tests, nice. Linking. We're linking okay. RPS tests. 
Zero Test out of failed. one. Yeah, Ooh. there we go. Cool. Oh my god. We did it. This okay. has always failed. We did it. It always fails. Nice. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna make a test directory. We're gonna copy this bad boy. Yeah, move that around. Yeah. Let's be let's be civilized here. Test. There we go, and then we can RM test RPS. I just... Yeah, Good. or just just MV that next time. You don't have to do the RM. You're right. I'm dumb. I forgot. <laughs> I don't. You can tell I don't use Linux very much at all. Or like I'm I'm a Linux noob. Like I I've been using it a lot at work, but like I just. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you're clearly very good at Vim, but, like, you're not that experienced in Linux. Like, usually, like, how does that even happen? Because <laughs> I'm on Windows all the time. What do you think? Oh, okay, okay. I'm on Windows, like, more than, like... But if you're on Windows, why not just use, like, IntelliJ? <laughs> uh, got... Or use, like, VS Code or something like that. Look, vi when I do. I do use IntelliJ. When I'm writing Rust, I use IntelliJ, but you know what I use in IntelliJ? The Vim key bindings. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. You're one of those people. Okay. I accept that. It just feels faster. I, I Look, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, look, hey, some whatever people, you know. You know, whatever some... hotkeys you know, like whatever works for you. All right. Some people tell me, like, you should use Emacs instead. You could write, like, Agda oh, code. Oh, God. Or whatever, don't even right? get me started. Look, like, you can write, like, Agda code and it, it, it way easier and, like, Emacs and stuff. It's almost like a requirement to use Emacs to use that language because it has like all those fancy math symbols and stuff. But like, you know, that's, I just that... think like in this day and age, unless you're SSHing into something and you need to for some reason like do development when you're just literally only have a terminal, like why don't you just use VS Code? It's available on literally every <laughs> every platform known to man. It's completely free. Has all these great plugins. Like I don't know, but that's that's just me. I know some people really like Vim, and it is cool how. I... Oh, I like uh, much look. Stuff you can do with I like Vim because like, not nineteen seventies anymore, guys. I like Vim because it fast to type stuff in, <laughs> and I would okay. Fair I enough. would. I'm okay with VS Code as well as long, but I have to have the the, the Vim key bindings in, in VS Code. Otherwise, fair enough. I ain't I ain't having yeah. it. <laughs> and to be fair, I don't really know how to use Vim that well. Like I actually do have to SSH into host sometimes for work, and I do use Vim then. I just know very very basic stuff. Uh, and it is it is cool, and I, I'm not really fully qualified to like say, oh, you should just use VS Code because I don't really know what the alternative is. But that's just my grumpy, <laughs> me being grumpy. Yeah, I mean, to to, to each their own. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people who exactly. still, uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, well, I think like a majority of people are using VS Code these days or some kind of IDE, which most people don't yeah. really, most people don't really want to deal with, like. Learning Vim key bindings and stuff like that, or Emacs, and it's complicated stuff. So, I I totally understand. Uh, so now we've got our first unit test. I think we want to actually start doing stuff with it, but I don't really know how. <laughs> I don't well, really know. Uh... Like, do we do we Vim that unit test? Can we get it to pass? How about that? That's like a good thing to try. Yeah. Can we just like exit pass? I don't know. Are like, what are we even? Not import system dot exit. What is? Oh, okay. So that's just an alias. We're just like calling calling system dot exit. No, exit this failure. Is... No, no, no. So we're importing from system dot exit the exit failure function. Oh, there must be an exit pass. There must be an exit pass if there's an exit failure, right? Well, I would imagine that this is exit pass. Right. Oh, I guess just if you just not... don't assert anything and it doesn't throw any errors, then yeah, I suppose that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, well, let's try that. Uh, frick, what's the command? Is Cabal just, just V2 build, builder, build, build co. Let's see how this thing does. RPS tests. Ooh, nice. All right, so that's uh, that's how that works. That's good. Good start. Sweet. I want to see, like, how do I get so my code, Is this though? using HUnit? I'm a bit confused now. Or is this some built-in testing thing? I have no idea. <laughs> thing? I have hmm. no idea. Interesting. Does uh... it say it's using HUnit? Like, if you just search... I thought there was a, mess... a reference to HUnit in here. There was, I think. There's a couple. All packages have a name. That's an example name. Well, one of... What does that say? 19 matches? Yeah. No, it says 15. 
Okay. Uh, do I, should I bump up the text size on the browser? I probably should. Yeah, a little bit for the browser as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can just control plus it. All right, there you go. Yeah. Uh, cool. HTML package is following. Okay, because so I'm using HTML as a as an example of all things. I guess. Yeah. They okay. also so are I guess responsible for HTML. Huh. I don't know. Well, it's clearly they've got some sort of unit testing thing built in, so that's kind of cool. Okay. Uh, I have literally no clue what they do. <laughs> Good documentation. Because I think you just like you just imported base or something like that when you add the t the test target, right? So I yeah. guess, but it's in there somewhere. Does Cabal use H unit by default? <laughs> Does it use J unit? <laughs> Can't Cabal install H unit? Huh. Or maybe just like Cabal default unit testing or something? Or Haskell default unit testing? Haskell default unit testing. Using types to unit test. Eh, no, that's not what I'm for. Automatically running unit tests in Haskell. Uh, it could be yeah. this. I don't know. Well, that's probably just like, oh, when you like open a pull request, can you automatically run the test or like on build or something? Yeah. Let me say, you can use a cabal. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so we have a mystical, magical, <laughs> mysterious unit testing framework but it's working so who cares exactly all right um i guess let's get a rock paper scissors function in this thing and start testing yeah how do so i so that's a good question how does that work in haskell like they're in the same directory so can you just reference it you like you still need to import it i guess right probably yeah, you still need think, to import it I, th I think i still have to import it <laughs> but then like if i refer to so main, main like Main is not a. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm actually not sure how I'm gonna do this. And how do you like make things visible? Yeah. Because there's some weird things in some language. Like Go, it's like if it's lowercase, it's not visible. Uh... There's so maybe there's some tricky gotchas here. I don't know. I I'm at this point. Uh, no, yeah. I, I really, I really don't. Uh, I really don't know. <laughs> Maybe we don't have H unit Current at all. state of integrating unit tests with Haskell's Cabal. That actually might be a little bit interesting. Just the fourth one down. Can we have yeah. a quick look at that answer? Let's, let's just take a look at that. What does this guy ask? When I Google for how to integrate unit tests with Cabal files, I either find blah, 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 blah. Could you bump up the text size uh, one more time? Oh, yeah. This, it reset itself. It's a different tab, I think. Perfect. Thank you. Can I get rid of this thing? No. Which does not seem to... Blah, 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 just... Yes. Uh, or see messages like, how would you run all unit tests using Cabal today? Make sure you have the latest thing. Uh -huh. Test suite. Maybe built in test support. Cabal test. test. Oh, interesting. Cabal test. What was the what was the uh, test this command is, that we were? This is legacy though. This is this is the legacy uh, command. Boy. Okay. Well, never mind. That yeah. might be might I have don't know. That, But like, I don't really know. How do I how do I assert? <laughs> how how do I even assert? That's a good question. Because uh, if you don't if you don't know what framework you're using, how can you know what the syntax of the framework is? That, yeah, that's Maybe that's what's that's bothering a, me the most right now. Is there a further example on the Haskell page that we pulled that uh, um, snippet of the build file from? The user guide. Oh, we can check. Maybe just scroll down a little bit. Like, there was the always fail. Maybe they'll just expand that to, like, asserting something. Asserting that Running 1 plus 1 is 2. So benchmarks. Mm. Package. Can I look up, like, assert? No. I don't know. Hmm. This is not in here. Um, Maybe just... We can try Google assert in Cabal, assert in Haskell or something. I don't know. Uh... H unit, yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe it is using H unit. Let's just see what it can uh, use H unit. Yeah, let's let, let's assume it uses H unit. Sure. Let's yeah. let's, let's do that.
It was the first result in Google. It must be using it. It could just be that it it, cre- it, it knows how to run test suites, but it doesn't actually. It's not actually tied to a particular um, oh. framework. That's that's my current thinking. Like I I might have to import. Uh, okay, unit. import test.hunit in the Haskell module where your test will reside. Okay, that's cool. Let's do that. So we'll probably have to pull it in as a dependency somehow, but maybe we'll get lucky. Can oh. we still build if we try to import that, or does it explode? That's a very good question. And I actually don't know the answer. Let's find out. Uh, Cabal. What am I doing? Just Cabal. There we go. Aha! Uh-huh. So I guess we need to tweak the, uh, like, whatever that file was called, your, like your build config file. Yeah. Cabal file. I guess it's like a manifest, right. sort of. So we have uh, in test suite. So. Uh, build depends. I guess. H unit? Yeah, H unit? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the, does the page tell you? Like maybe the the H unit page will tell you. Maybe there's a step beforehand Probably. that's like, here's what you need to uh, the unit testing framework. Okay, unit testing guide. What's the like name that I need to put in like my... So there is a download package. There's a download Sorry. cabal source cabal source package. It said. Where 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 where? Uh, go back. So under downloads, the first link is a Cabal source packet. I don't know if you can just like download that and uh, put Cabal at it. I don't yet. think I need to download it manually though, because it'll automatically oh, okay. download. It should do it automatically. Okay. Uh, introduction. As long as I put it in the, in the manifest file. Next thing. section, getting started. Import that. Oh, come on, seriously? What about before that part? Uh, Add H unit to Cabal <laughs> file. Creating a package. How do you install H unit for a project? Oh, that looks good. How to use H unit and Cabal to do automated testing? That's also. H unit is a library, as with other languages, is in place for managing and automatically downloading. Cabal install. Oh, this is a legacy. Can we do Cabal ago. install H unit? Oh, this is a, that's so legacy. Yeah, that's that's old. Can this we use a, a legacy huge, approach? Uh, like what is it? I don't want to. How could not find module H unit? No, it's could so, not find module H unit. It's so a bad. The legacy overflow? one is so bad. Okay, okay, no. okay. <laughs> We're not doing that. Uh, okay, what is this guy saying to do? He's saying, add one line to test dots. Well, dear, is that the answer or the question? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I, I don't know, question. man. I'm just. I'm just going Scroll here. Scroll down to the answer. Scroll down to the answer. <sighs> okay, you installed H unit globally with here. Stack, look, but H, that doesn't H mean... unit. Look, see, look, base comma H unit. Build dependence. So, okay, your Cabal file for the project needs to specify a dependency on H unit. So the build should depend on. Do we have build depends on? Build we do. Depends? That that's the thing that I just edited at the bottom of this. Thing H unit, see? Okay, and the syntax is correct. Do we need to use stack to like? I fetch I it have or stack like installed. I don't think I need to do anything special with that. Okay, look, let's. Well, the guy was talking about using stack to like, I... get H unit, right? I don't well, let's care. just see what happens here. I don't okay. care. We're gonna running. Oh, nice. Oh wait, no wait, no. Never. Do Although, we need to run Cabal update or something? something? I could do yeah. a Cabal update. I might have to do a Cabal. Update. Resolving dependencies. Oh my god. Oh my god. Does it say anything about H unit? Configuring test suite. Warning. I think this is the same every time. Come Building on. Test on. Wait a it. second. Did we get this far last time? No, I we didn't. I don't think we did. No, it passed. Nice. There we go. Sweet. So, okay. So, it, Cabal just magically handled it for us. Thanks, Cabal. You're a real pro. Yeah. Okay, so now we can start asserting things like crazy. We can go back to that uh, H unit page and All right. start asserting. So, oh, what, what, what did we learn today? Like there's no tomorrow. Well, what, what, what did we learn today? We learned that Well, we that, 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 that this is how you do unit testing. You have to, you, you can set it up with Cabal, but the actual unit testing framework is something you have to import separately. It's not something you get out of the box. Right. And so, and Cabal can download can like fetch the H unit dependency for us. We just have to add it to the Cabal file. Yeah. In the right spot as a build dependency. 
-hmm. and then it'll just magically handle it for us which is pretty cool all right we've got a little bit of time left let's let's try and test this thing let's, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's go let's see if we can just get a quick thing maybe we can get an assertion or something in here please just like assert true or assert false and see what okay. happens here we can define test cases like so assert equal oh gosh look at the syntax Wow, those are backwards arrows. I'm confused. Oh, no, these arrows are for the do syntax. Oh, okay. That's just a variable binding. Getting started. Define test cases as appropriate. Assert equal. Why don't we just, like, steal that first one? It looks like it's manageable. You so what is what? it doing? You're right. So it's asserting that for, for this thing is equal to what? Okay. I don't I'm know gonna what have to foo take is, apart though. that syntax a little for, bit. It's foo. probably something they defined, right? Early yeah, no, foo... I don't know what foo is. They they don't tell us what foo is. That's the problem. Like ah. Okay, so this is yeah. This is the, this is, is the text confusing. to print. For foo three. Right. Blah. Okay, One, so two. Uh, that's kind of mysterious. Can we just like assert like foo is equal to foo? Like the strings are equal or something I like have that? No idea. Okay, group them together. Or just and assert then two numbers are equal. Create a test list and then okay. run it. Okay. Hey. Wait, how do you run a test list? Test label. Run okay, test. so the test labels are the thing to the left of the equal sign. So we need to... So we have main as our current test. Test oh, label... Oh, hold on a second. Uh, add two plus two. There. Test one. Right. Okay. And we should probably call it tests instead of main. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And do you want to say... Probably. I don't know, but then it won't recognize it. That's the problem. I don't want to rename it just yet. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, like, I, I do want to rename it, I just don't want to rename it now. Okay. Assert equals, oh. yeah, just like foo equals foo kind of thing. Um, so it should just be like foo, comma, no wait. No wait. Uh, this is weird syntax. This is very confusing. I have no idea what this is. Oh, I think, no, I think foo three equals one, comma, two. I think that's what that's trying to say. Right? Or am I, I don't know. I, I have literally no clue right now. I'm having trouble <laughs> interpreting what that syntax is. Me, me too. I'm, to tell I'm just going to put blah here. <laughs> Let's see where that goes. Like. Go, go, go. Ah! What does that even mean? Ah! Ah! Why do you do this? Windows. Okay, we're going to uh, Cabal. There we go. Main. Uh oh. With actual type test. I oh, yeah, so it doesn't like main anymore. Hmm. Expected type I O T zero with actual type test. Oh, cause right. I'm returning a test list, which is just a test. How do you run the test? Run test T T. You might see run test T T. Uh, I guess that's what I do. I have to. I have to run test T T. Ah. Uh, frick. I should just like create a shortcut to my test directory or something, but whatever. Run test tt. And we'll put a dollar sign. Oh, I should explain the dollar sign to you. That's, that's one thing I haven't done yet. So this dollar sign, you'll see it in a lot of Haskell code. You know what it does? What it does is what? it does this. That's it. It's just a single oh. character way of surrounding everything after the dollar sign in parentheses. So you don't have to jump to the end of the line and add another brace that, uh, or a bracket. That's it. Okay. Friend. So I'm going to do that because it's easier for me to not have to type stuff. Yeah, yeah I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put parentheses around that. Of course. Duh. You can't, can't parse that. Slash main. Actually, what am I doing? I can just build slash slash main slash uh, RPS or test RPS test RPS dot HS. Oops, that is uh -oh. not apparently the name. Uh, oh, great source slash main source slash test. That, that would make sense. Nice. Okay, this needs to be in parentheses. And now we can cabal.
It worked. We did it. Woo! Two plus two is Exciting. equal to now, four. Can we break it? Yeah. Let, can we just like break the assert just to make us do a sanity check? Uh, if you want, sure. Well, let's do it. So like, okay. Uh, so we two said plus three blah. Is <laughs> okay. So can can you explain the syntax here? Just so two plus three is definitely not going to be four. What is the blah there for? Um. Let's look. Mm, I don't know. I have a feeling it's the failure message. <laughs> That's the oh, because okay, if I cool, see cool, blah cool. in the text, right, makes sense. Makes sense. If I see blah in the text yeah. now, then I think that's going Let's to. Let's see. Obviously, we could have looked up the documentation for this, but like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Why would I do that? Blah. Yeah, I see oh, blah. blah! I see blah. Expect, expect nice. four. Nice. Expected four, but got five. Oh, nice. That's the failure. Can we go message. back and just look at that thing one more time? I just want to like have Absorb this it. burned into my brain, right? Okay, so assert equal, there's a failure message, and then it's like left hand side and then right hand side. Yeah, it awesome. takes so it just takes three arguments. It just takes uh, the failure message, it takes the I guess expected, and then it takes the actual, I think. And then the actual or is right. it actual and then expected. Or it could be the other way around. Oh, expected four, got five. Yeah, the actual is the right hand side. Good. Okay. Okay. That's how you do unit testing in awesome. Haskell. We figured it out. But... Hey, perfect. And two oh one, that's yeah. like perfect timing. Very nice. All right, cool. So, well, yeah, we didn't quite we didn't get to test the rock paper scissors one, but we can quickly do that at the start of the next episode, and then yeah, I think proceed. that would be a I think that would be a fine way of uh, of doing things. So, that's it for cool. today's stream. Awesome. Uh, that was the experience of uh, doing unit testing in Haskell. I I have to say I think the documentation around it is a little bit uh, not 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 great. <laughs> I will say like yes I mean you got to at least say like on this Haskell unit users guide like I don't know it's cabal a common thing if, yes. if people are using cabal could Every... you not like just have a section that's like added as a build dependency almost everybody is going to be using cabal <laughs> yeah so then what the heck man I get I don't know anyway. I don't know like in in Rust they have a built-in unit framework already like you don't have to like import a unit framework and I guess you know like yeah, that's a little bit less flexible in a way. Or like, no, I guess that's that's tied to Cargo, but like Cabal could do the same thing. Cargo and Cabal are very similar tools. So like in Rust, it's like super easy. You just like you install Cargo, right? You use Cargo uh, to install your dependencies and everything, and then you just start writing unit tests. You don't have to like download and import or install any kind of unit testing framework. So like that's uh, nice. this is I, I think this is like a victim of like legacy. Uh, Le Le legacy cruft like haskell thought that this was the best way to do things but now we know like there are easier much more user-friendly ways of handling this or maybe it's just trade-offs too like you know maybe they they maybe they stand by their decision of having the test framework be a separate thing but in my opinion i think Rust handles this better <laughs> it's it's a lot easier and if you're a beginner it's way more beginner friendly too but, yeah, I mean, I hope that they would like define the syntax a little bit better as they got down further. I, I mean, maybe there's documentation for all of their functions, but uh, it wasn't clear to me. Certainly, just like looking yeah. at that you first know, example, that it's like expected. this example sucks. This yeah. example really like, sucks. Failure message. Yeah, it's not not great. Because what? Because like you could have done an example like mine, the two plus two equals four one, and I think that one's actually yeah. way way simpler to parse and understand, right? No, totally. Yeah, I, like, I absolutely agree. Like they could have then, actually made like, this yeah. like an error message, right? And then yeah, that would have that would have been so much easier to read, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, anyway, there know. you go. We we did it. We we tested something. Now you know. Yes. Yeah, that's good. That's a uh, good progress for today. Okay. Well, I will. Uh, I guess I'll talk to you later then. Yeah. Sounds good. I will talk to you next time. All right. See you. All right. Enjoy lunch. <laughs>